And just listen to what I'm talking. So in this video, we are going to show you a basic Hibernate program in Java. It shows you how to do basic crude operations in Hibernate. Crude meaning create, read, update and delete. So if you go to this demo program, it's called Hibernate Hello World Demo.java and it is located under It is under the Hibernate mapping uh, package under your COM training folder. So in this program, what we do is we have a class called stock. We create a stock object and then we retrieve the stock object that we just created and then we try to do update the stock object and then we try to delete the stock object as well so we are doing all the crude operations and we make use of hibernate to do all these crude operations so the first thing that needs to be done is in hibernate is to create a session and we make use of a utility class here called hibernate util which can build the session factory and this hibernate util it loads it configures the hibernate session by using this file called hibernate.cfg.xml so let's look at this file called hibernate.cfg.xml it is a basic configuration file in which you configure the session factory with all the database properties like the connection URL, the, JD, the, the JDBC driver class, the connection, the database connection username and password. And then we have something called as a dialect. Every database vendor has his own SQL di dialect that is his own customized version of SQL. So we have to mention which vendors dialect we are using and this show SQL is a diagnostic property if it is set to true it will show all the SQL statements that Hibernate is going to issue when running the crude operations and then finally we have to load all the mapping files so for every table class combination there is a mapping file so if you have 20 tables with 20 equivalent classes in Java you will have 20 mapping files here so you will have like 20 times this particular line except that this name of this file will be different so for a customers uh, for the customer table you'll have the customer.hbm.xml for an order class you'll have order.hbm.xml and it is in this HBM XML file you do the mapping between the relational database table and the Java class. So let's look at this stock.hbm.xml. In the stock.hbm.xml, you are mapping this class called stock, which is in the COM training hibernate mapping package, to this table called stock. And if you see, there is a property called stock ID or attribute the Java class attribute called stock ID which maps to the column called stock underscore ID in the table stock and if you see it is a, it is an automatically generated column so it is auto incremented in the database so you from the Java code you never have to set the stock ID it will be automatically be created in the database by the database the only properties that you have to set in Java code is, would be the stock code and the stock name. And the stock code is mapped to the column called stock underscore code and the stock name attribute is mapped to the stock underscore name. 
and here we specify the length of and in Java the attributes are strings and in the database the length of the stock code is 10 maximum length is 10 and the stock name maximum length is 20 not null implies that you cannot have a null stock code when you are creating a stock object it has to have some value and unique means you cannot have when unique is true that means you cannot have duplicate stock code or a duplicate stock name and all these tables were created by running the we have a DDL here which DDL stands for data, uh, data definition language statements which create all the tables that this example is using and if you notice this is from the training resources hibernate folder there is a file called hibernate demo tables dot sql and in this table we have the st for the stock table we have the stock id and it is auto incremented that means it will the database will automatically populate the values for the stock id and then we have the stock code and the stock name which the stock code is of size 10 stock name is size 20 and they are both not null and then you also define that the stock name is unique by this unique key the stock code is also unique and the primary key of the table is stock id so let's go back to the java code so we run the sql and create all the tables in the database and let's go back to the demo program so all you have to do is once you create this session by calling the get session factory dot open session you start a transaction and then you create a java object of class stock by doing a new stock and then you set the stock code and the stock name and if you notice here we are not setting the stock id the stock id will automatically be created by the database and then you run the session dot save on the stock object and then it will get automatically and Hibernate will issue an insert statement and save it in the database. So you can see that in the con let's run this program once. First let me explain this and then we can will run this program. And then once you inserted it, you can write a query which is a HQL statement, Hibernate query language. It it, it almost resembles SQL but it is not exactly the same as SQL. And you can run this HQL and retrieve the stock object that you just inserted and you can print it as well so this here you are retrieving all stock codes which start with the number 7 this percent is a wild card it means anything followed by 7 and then what we are doing finally is we are issuing another HQL where we update the, uh, the row that we just inserted in the database. So the only change that we are making is the stock name has been changed from A to Frontier Airlines. And then we commit this and then we retrieve the stock object that we just inserted. And then finally we can do a delete of the stock object that we just created and after deleting it if you try to retrieve it you won't be able to find anything. So let's run this program. There was some error. Okay, I already ran this program earlier, so let me delete all the data from the database. Since the data was already there, it was saying there is a duplicate entry for the stock code. If you remember the stock code and the stock name were unique. In the previous run, I had created it but not deleted it. So when I tried to run this program again, it failed. So I went and deleted the existing records in the stock table. And now I'm going to run this again. And when I run this again, you can see all the SQL statements that Hibernate issues. First, it inserts it inserts the data into the stock table. 
then it retrieves the data. So you can see that it has retrieved the stock code of 7523 and stock name of A. Then we update the stock and then the number of rows that got updated was 1 and then we retrieve the updated records and we see that the stock name has changed from A to Frontier Airlines. And then finally we delete the stock and then when we try to retrieve it, since it's already deleted, it's not going to find anything. So this basically is a small demo program of how Hibernate works and in the next class we'll see more advanced examples.